this beautiful crystal here uh, by jewelers is called uh, green tourmaline. And uh, by geologists, it's called uh, elbaite. But for today, it's an icon for one of the key ideas that's going to enable fusion propulsion for rapid interplanetary travel throughout the solar system. And so I want to uh, credit a few people that have helped shape uh, what we're doing here, Francis, Theo, Bill Seidler, and uh, Rob Adams. Uh, but first off, I want to get a little bit philosophical. Uh, not too much, because I'm an engineer and I can't. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but why do we explore? So early uh, in our beginnings, you know, perhaps it was for simple things like uh, more pizza, for example. Um, another example is a preferred climate. Maybe it was too hot, too cold, too wet, too dry. You liked it the opposite. Um, as we uh, developed in our civilization, we uh, <clears throat> perhaps uh, improved trade routes uh, between neighboring civilizations. Um, and then as we got more enlightened, uh, scientific discovery, you know, for those of you that uh, were alive in the 80s understand that reference. And, uh, and quite frankly, you know, sometimes you're just bored and you want to get out of the house. So now we have the ability to actually leave the Earth. But why explore off of planet Earth? Well, for starters, um, there are all the technology spinoffs. So I think everybody here is open to the idea of new ideas and creating new things and collaborating and working together. And so this is exactly uh, a paradigm of that because it is very hard to get off planet Earth and travel throughout the solar system. Um, once we're there, and once this becomes more routine, there's going to be the commercial aspects like asteroid mining. There is a finite time that this Earth is a good spaceship to live on, and so eventually we're going to uh, uh, have to leave Earth if we're going to continue our civilization. And finally, um, perhaps you just want to take a really expensive vacation. So, but in the meantime, uh, in the short term, let's define a realistic goal to make routine leaving the, our Earth-Moon cradle. So, for example, let's go to Mars. It's one of our closest neighbors. Um, and I suggest that we take three months to get there, stay a month, and return for seven months. But what's magical about a seven-month trip? Well, for starters, uh, the longest International Space Station expeditions last about 210 days, and that's seven months. So the point is, we know humans can put up with small spaces in the dark in space uh, for that long. Um, and as another data point, Ohio-class submarines, the mission durations are up to uh, three months or longer. So we know between three and seven months people can tolerate that. So in other words, this is a very difficult endeavor. Let's try to do as many things as we already know works. So for the rest of the talk, I'm going to be talking about fusion and what is going to be enabled when we develop these technologies. But first, I have to give you a little bit of an introduction. So, what is fusion, first of all? So it's the process by which multiple like-charged atomic nuclei join together and form other compounds. So one of the uh, more common reactions is between deuterium and tritium. These are heavy isotopes of hydrogen, heavy hydrogen. So that when they collide and undergo a fusion reaction, what comes out the other side are these new compounds. One is a neutron, and uh, one is an alpha particle or a helium atom, and a lot of energy. Just how much energy is it, though? So if you were to take fusion fuel and take a half a gallon of it, uh, it is comparable in energy equivalent to a fully loaded external fuel tank for a, a space shuttle. So it's one million times as energy dense as rocket fuel. So there is a lot of energy available for us. But obviously, uh, why are we not using it yet? Well, it's hard to do. So there are several problems that we're, going, that we're facing for, for propulsion. Number one is the temperature. You have to have temperatures of 180 million degrees Fahrenheit in order to ignite a fusion plasma. That's very, very difficult. That's actually 10 times hotter than the interior of the sun. Uh, secondly, so we are pursuing fusion for terrestrial power, and we have some very interesting uh, paths forward for that. But the problem is for terrestrial power, these reactors are of the size of sports stadiums. That's the Astrodome. I, I selected that on purpose there. Uh, but uh, this is enormous. We cannot afford to put the Astrodome, Yankee Stadium, or anything like that up in orbit. Way too heavy. Uh, and finally, uh, the, uh, the fuels that we're looking at, the easiest ones to make work, unfortunately, involve either, number one, tritium. And the problem with tritium is, at least in the United States, for example, you have to manufacture it from other, uh, from other things through nuclear reactions. We've only manufactured 225 kilograms since 1955. We need tons of this for a single mission. So it's not likely that we're going to be using tritium anytime soon for a mission. And the second thing, helium-3, is derived from tritium. So we actually manufacture that from tritium. So if we only have 225 kilograms of tritium, we're going to have even less of helium-3, or we have to go to 
to the moon and, and mine cubic miles of lunar regolith in order to get it. So it's not likely that we're going to be able to do it that way. So I'm sorry, but I'm an engineering professor. What are you going to do? I have to throw an equation at you. I just, I just can't help it. It's in my nature. Um, but we're going to break this down very simply. So think of this as sort of like a, a stove or something, and we're, we're cooking. So on the left-hand side is the desired effect here. This dn over dt simply means the number of refusion reactions that are happening per second. Okay? Now, is equal to, here are two of the knobs that we get to turn, uh, the product of the number density of one of the fusion fuels times the number density of the other one. So the bigger these numbers, the more fusion reactions take place. Next thing is set by Mother Nature. So this is how easy and how likely are these reactions to occur under the conditions that we have set. And then finally, we have the reacting volume. So now going back, I mentioned tritium and helium-3 are extremely rare. So let's pick naturally abundant fuels and see what we can make work out of what's left. So we have hydrogen, uh, deuterium, uh, two isotopes of lithium, and boron-11. So we have lots and lots, plenty of this stuff in order to be able to define missions. So now the next step, because we want to get this number density up as high as possible, well, let's pick solid compounds because they are a thousand times more dense than gases. And so this is one of the things that, that the type of thinking that departed from what they're doing for terrestrial power production. So the first thing that we found was this elbaite. It actually contains every single one of those um, elements that I showed you on the previous slide. However, it makes a terrible fusion fuel because it's mostly aluminum and silicon and other things that won't burn. So it'll, it'll never ignite. But that led us to the following lithium deuteride, which brings up a point I, I, I mentioned earlier about the seven month trip, doing things that work. So I asked the question, um, has this ever worked before? Well, speaking of the theme igniting, um, <laughs> turns out when we looked up the applications of lithium deuteride, um, well, uh, it has been used for hydrogen bombs. This is one of the key fuels. Um, I'm not giving anything away, don't worry, this is all online. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, um, you don't want to have a huge uh, nuclear weapon exploding out the back of the vehicle and vaporizing the vehicle. The astronauts don't have a sense of humor about that type of thing. So we need to make it safer and a much smaller yield uh, that we burn. So we're going to use tremendous amounts of le electricity to do this. So what you see here is called a diode. Okay, this is not like a diode on a circuit board. It's a much, uh, much larger thing. And what we would do is we would have wires of a lithium deuteride uh, surrounding some sort of core that we drive a very large current through. How large? About a mega amp for starters. And a mega amp is about 100,000 times, pulling about 100,000 times more current than your vacuum cleaner. So, uh, and what happens when you have that kind of current, the magnetic field that's generated creates a tremendous force that causes this to implode on itself, just like a piston implodes and compresses gas in your car. And it ignites this fuel. It gets to very, very high temperatures. So um, the very first speaker today talked about his oh shit moment. So uh, this represents uh, mine when the equipment started arriving uh, this past May. So this was a, a facility that we inherited from Defense Threat Reduction Agency. It was used for nuclear weapons effects testing that we're now repurposing to do fusion propulsion experiments. Now this device creates uh, three terawatts instantaneous power over 100 nanoseconds. That's actually 20% of the world's total output power in a single flash. It actually generates 30 times more current in its pulse than a bolt of lightning. So now, what can we do now that we uh, are working on this technology and we're going to make it happen? Um, remember before I said we want to try to do something that would enable seven months. Well, the first techno what you look at here on the x-axis is, is time. This is trip time in years to go to Mars and come back. Uh, and this is the mass. So you can think of this mass of the vehicle is tied uh, directly to cost for going into space and doing this mission. So over here, chemical, we can do the mission, but it would take several years. It's too long to, to put humans uh, up in space uh, because of the radiation, the low gravity. It's very harmful uh, to the body. Um, the nuclear technologies are the first things that we're going to use to get there. Um, and they allow us to get there within about a year or a year and a half. But if you want to start making this routine, you have to use fusion. Fusion can do this seven-month mission. 
And uh, so how fast is going to Mars and back in seven months? It's about 50,000 miles an hour. So just to give you a sense of scale, how fast is that? If you were to get on an airplane and travel 50,000 miles an hour, it would take you about three minutes to go from LA to New York. So an incredible amount of time. So um, in summary, we're gonna take the power that runs the sun and the stars, we're gonna turn this into a spacecraft, and then we're gonna travel throughout the solar system. Thank you very much.